I don't have to say anything then. <laughs> I'm a born Bermudian. I grew up on a farm until I was 12 years old. And I attended Warwick Academy until I was 16. I had no idea that I would become an artist someday. Visions. I was a lunar affected child. Anybody know what that is? They used to call us lunatics. I still am. Visions, vivid dreams, and nightmares. I call that an overactive subconscious. I went to boarding school in the US where I discovered that America was in turmoil, that drugs and decadence were the prevalent issues, and I was becoming involved and beginning to move towards the edge. Business college came along. I don't know why I went to business college, but I did. <laughs> I lasted two years. I left as a communist rebel, sliding into an identity crisis. But there was a beginning here, and that beginning was my interest in art was growing. I got into painting and drawing. I embarked on studying art history. I wanted to know everything I could about it. I had particular affinity to the surreal movement. Don't laugh. <laughs> it's at this time I also discovered the ocean. My father had bought a yacht and he said he'd pay for me to go to Florida and sail back to Bermuda on it. I found the ocean, I found the liquid desert, and I found sailing. Art and sailing seemed to have the right chemistry for me. I became a professional sailor in under two years. The ocean afforded a space and place to conceptualize. It also offered me great adventure on a grand scale. Believe me, that was quite a wave. I was, I was offered a chance to do the round the world race, but I applied to art schools at the same time. <clears throat> the deal on the race fell through. An urban environment of New York City instead of the deep ocean. I was accepted into Parsons School of Design and I wanted to major in painting. New York was Gotham in the 1970s, decadent and dirty. I called it a rich learning environment. <laughs> I was becoming increasingly interested in sculpture, especially carving, subtraction. I decided to major in sculpture. My teachers were all practicing professional artists. Some already had works in the Modern Art Museum in New York and in other places in America. They not only mentored me, they thought I was an emerging talent. After art school, graduation and marriage, I graduated with honors in 1981. We made the decision to move back to Bermuda. I was unaware of the art scene in Bermuda and I was shocked to discover just how entrenched in tradition it was. There was no room for new ideas. Everything was framed. I joined the BSOA, participated in group and solo shows, helped form the Dockyard Art Center and the BNG with Charles Zuhl and others. These were good times. I began <clears throat> forming new ideas in sculpture. Metal was becoming my new medium. I also started playing a game between the dimensions. <clears throat> the work was dazzling and edgy, but it was also cold and rough. The next thing to come was commissions. This was, the title of this piece is Mercury. It sat high on a hill on the south shore, splitting the horizon and piercing the sun at times. Unfortunately, Hurricane Fabian didn't like it. The next big commission was for Bacardi. I won the commission, and the piece was to be 12 feet high by 16 feet long. The title, Leading Edge. 
the shadow makes the second wing. The submission was 20 pages long, including engineering drawings. It was never built, but at least they took the model. They were afraid of the look in the building. In painting, I have continued to paint throughout my life. Very often, there are common themes and subjects. Ancient warriors, these are watercolors. I love history, I love ancient history. The female face and the female, female form have always been of great interest to me. This is the same model taken to a mask-like image. I hope to take this further using carved panels. I also want to put jewels in their eyes. Teaching, I have a natural gift to teach and to mentor. To bring the best out, of, it brings the best out in me. This is my goddaughter at age 10 giving me lip while I was teaching her drawing. In 2005, I did my last solo show here. I was getting very disenchanted with the Bermuda art public. There were so many people who did not seem to understand the value of ideas in art. I think Alicia's points were brilliant, Alicia. But I'm back after 10 years. I went coaching sailing instead. I'm making art and I'm teaching it as well. I'm shaking off the dust and have challenged myself to do a solo show one year from this date here. The title is Mona Lisa 2015. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Any questions for Paul? Okay, Paul, I want to know how do you relate sailing and art, or sport and art? Well, sailing is a, a minor art form, but if you realize the vastness of the ocean, which is what really pulled my chemistry together, it's, that's why I call it the liquid desert, because you can go for three days and see nothing but what is around you, the boat, the people on the boat with you, if you like going to sea with people, I do. Right? Maybe you'll see one bird in three days. That bird becomes the most clearest, most focused thing you can ever see. And when you're an artist and you're forming your ideas, and I make art from the inside out, I take in a lot of information, but I do not render from an object. It's not part of me. Uh, maybe that's also a sculptural end of things. But sailing and art, for me, were just the right combination. It pulled together a lot of things in my brain that were not gelled. OK, another question. Good evening. I was just wondering, through your experience in life, what do you think makes you uh, separate or significant in your ability to create art? versus those who are inhibited. Do you think that there is something significant that, that you have actually perceived that is a difference? I, um, I think if I didn't make art, I'd probably go crazy. Okay. What's inside of me started very young. So getting it out of me is very productive for me just as coaching sailing with kids was very productive because they kept me honest. Right? No idle time, create. So where do you teach? I teach up here. Mm -hmm. uh, I just taught a course on the components of significant form. It was done as a drawing course. A lot of artists struggle with those components. But you as the audience, if I tell you, what are the components of significant form? They're line, shape, color, mass, texture. Line defines time, volume, positive and negative shape. So what I'm trying to do is help the art community in this island get into the formal language so that the quality of their work gets higher. But I can't teach a course in sculpture or painting. 
problem with sculpture is once you've made it, you know, you got it in the bedroom and you can't get around it to get to the bathroom because it's the tenth piece you put in the bedroom because nobody bought it. Thank you. Very good, Eddie.